Good morning. I'm Larry Woodham, the Green Winder, and uh, welcome to the second video in a series of educational uh, videos for the wine consumer. Today we're going to talk about the difference between filtered and unfiltered wines. Now this is very basic information and you have to know this as a consumer if you're going to go into the marketplace to buy wines. You have to know there's a huge distinction between filtered wines and unfiltered wines. Now most of you here today have never heard of unfiltered wines and never heard of filtered wines. But we're going to draw that distinction today so that you can actually become a better wine consumer. Now filtration of things like water, I think it's great. We need to continue to do that and some other, other things. But wines, when we think of unfiltered wines, we're thinking of wines that are loaded with sediment and it has to be something terrible. And then, But when we think of filtered wines, we're thinking of stuff that's very wonderful and nice and beautiful. Is that the case? You're going to have to draw your own conclusions today, but I think you're going to be surprised at the answer. Now, unfiltered wines. All the wines you see in front of you here at Bunker Hill Vineyard and Winery, every one of these are unfiltered wines. Now, from our last uh, video we did, number one, I said in there that the purpose of winemaking was to capture a single harvest and to project that single harvest indefinitely into the future with no end time. Now, that's the purpose. It is not to source juices and concentrates and bring it from all different places and bring them into a facility. Unfiltered wines, which all of these wines are, are the only wines that adhere to that mandate from our ancestors from thousands of years ago. Now, let's think about this. How long have we been making unfiltered wines? A hundred years? A thousand years? No, you're, you have to go back a little further than that, around 8,000 years, maybe a little more. We have been making filtered wines, which are 80% of the marketplace plus today, uh, for about 100 years, 95 to 100 years. So what changed if the filtered wines are the predominant wines in the marketplace today and unfiltered wines have, are not the predominant wine in the market? What's changed? And how did that change? Well, about that time frame, a couple things were happening in the world. Technology came along and we learned how to actually filter wines. Now, that had to come too, but we also were moving away from the countrysides. Most of us, about a hundred years ago, started moving into cities. So we moved away from the earth, we moved away from the how things were grown and wines were made. All of that came into play to where you're at the point today in the marketplace where most of the wines out there will be filtered wines. Now keep this in mind, any winery on planet Earth, including Bunker Hill, if they're making a, an unfiltered wine, unfiltered now, they're going to tell you right on the label it's unfiltered. You will never have to guess, you will never have to wonder if this is an unfiltered wine. It will be clearly on the label. You will know it is, no question. So keep that in mind. Now if it's a filtered wine, which is over 80% of the mar marketplace today, nowhere on the label will you ever see the word filtered. Why is that? I don't know. You need to ask them. If you were proud of the product you were making, you think you would want the public to be aware that your wine is being filtered. Now what are they actually filtering out of our wines? Well, a lot of hype goes on about taste, flavor, and bouquet, right? Yes, we all know that. You're absolutely true when you're talking about unfiltered wines. But how about filtered wines? When you filter your wines, every particulate of fruit is removed from the wines. That's what gives this wine its taste, flavor, bouquet. So the, the makers of filtered wines have a little dilemma. Your wine is absolutely crystal clear. There's no particulates of fruit left. But you have to offset that with something. So most of the factory wineries producing the filtered wines today are having to make some adjustments with their wine products. Now if you turn to the back label on most of your filtered wines and look at the first paragraph, you're going to see something that says like 
hints of floral, notes of citrus, aromas of black cherry, all of these wonderful sounding things that really have nothing to do with the fruit itself, but they sound really nice, and that's how they're offsetting the fact that your wines were filtered. Now, if you were to look at any of these fil un unfiltered wines at Bunker Hill, it's, it just simply says it's whole fresh stuff, and uh, there's nothing taken out, so there's nothing put back into it. The wine, whatever it is, is going to taste like the fruit or vegetable that's inside of it. There are no hints, notes, flavors, and aromas in an unfiltered wine. They are made from whole fresh stuff, so what comes through is the taste, flavor, bouquet of the fruit or vegetable itself. Now that's the magic of unfiltered wines. You don't have to make adjustments with anything. So what else is different about filtered and unfiltered wines? Well, unfiltered wines are the only wines that age. Now I understand today, most of you are going to say, well I go home today and if I, and if I get a bottle of wine, it's going to be gone in two days, I'm going to drink it, and, you know, and we're done with it. But I'm going to ask you this question and I want you to think long and hard about it. Does integrity matter with your wine product? Of course it should, and, and, and I think you'll agree with that. The integrity of wine is in its ability to age. Unfiltered wines are the only wines that age. There's no end time. If you were to take this wine home and you were to wrap it up in a coat and you were to stick it in your closet and leave it there for 20 years, this bottle of wine would be 20 times as good. It doesn't go bad. You might have to at that point bring it back to Bunker Hill. You know, they would take the old natural cork out, put a new natural cork in, reseal it, give it back to you, and you could throw it in, a, wrap it in your coat and put it in the closet for another 20 years. It just continues to get better and better and better. Now I personally had unfiltered wines over 50 years old. And when you actually try a wine of that vintage, you understand the importance of the aging process of real wines. They just get better year after year, decade after decade. What about filtered wines? <clears throat> do they get better once they go into the bottle? And how long do they age? Well, the reality is they don't. When they go into the bottle, they're about as good as they're going to get. And you're only going to be able to keep them for about two to four years because they're going to turn to vinegar or go bad after that. Now that's, the, that's kind of the intent of the factory winers. If, if, if you have a wine product like this that could be around for a very long period of time, it keeps, maybe keeps you out of the marketplace. But if you have a wine product that's going to have to be consumed very rapidly and doesn't age, then you're going to have people come back into the marketplace on a much regular basis and give you more and more and more money. So is it about the quality of the product? If it is, an integrity, then you have to lean towards the unfiltered wines. If you're only interested in creating a product that's going to be around for a short period of time and doesn't age, then of course you have to gravitate towards the filtered wines. Now, <clears throat> something else you need to understand. The tops of the wine bottle, because this is an unfiltered wine and it has no end time and it will continue to age for decades and decades and decades, you actually have to seal it. Every one of these are dipped into hot wax. The wax actually bonds to the glass and protects the integrity of the wine inside for the long haul. Now if you pick up a bottle of filtered wine, which never says they're filtered by the way, so don't look for the word filtered, you'll see plastic and aluminum foils up here. Now that's gingerbread designed to simulate the real stuff, which is the sealing wax. Now you as a consumer look at that and you think, oh, everything's equal. But how much effort and how much real security do you get out of plastic and aluminum foils? It doesn't bond to the glass like this stuff does. It's good for a couple years, maybe four years, but that's perfect with the, with the factory wineries making your filtered wines. Now, <clears throat> remember, unfiltered wines are made from whole, fresh stuff. You remember in our last series, the very first one, we talked about how to read a wine label. If you as a wine consumer want to hit a home run out of the park and over the, to the next country, what you want to find and see on your wine label is what we talked about in the last session, which was how to read a wine label. You want to see those four words, grown, produced, 
vented and bottled on the label. That tells you it's a real winery. It's coming from under your feet. And then you want to see the word unfiltered. Because unfiltered tells you it's exactly made from the whole fresh stuff and nothing at all has been removed from the product. And you have longevity built into it plus quality. So if you really want a home run with wines, then you have to look at your unfiltered wines. They are undoubtedly the, the best wines on the planet Earth. However, when you today go back into the, your marketplace and you, you start looking for these unfiltered wines, keep in mind, over 80% of the wines in the marketplace today are not unfiltered, they're filtered wines. Now, most of your, uh, most of your filtered wines are made from juices and concentrates. Remember, go back to the first session, how do you read a wine label? If they're growing it, they will clearly tell you on the label, and if they're not, well, you'll have to ask where the juices and concentrates are coming from. So, if there's any questions, if not, please go to our website. Again, it's www.bunkerhillvineyard.com. That's www.bunkerhillvineyard.com. So, until our next session, salute and happy days. From me, the Green Winer, to you. Goodbye.